joining us from her home in Los Angeles. Please welcome Leanne Rimes. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure. You know, Thanks. I can't tell you how it's just not lost on me, the mask Singer and what it represents in your life and where you are. I know that you said after you won, um, you were emotional talking about your experience on the show and you said you felt like it was the first time people were actually hearing and feeling you in a show where we don't see you. You felt <laughs> yeah. liberated. Yeah. I mean, I think that's how we would all feel. I mean, I don't know. I, I know I'm not the only one that walks around or has walked around wearing a mask. And I think, you know, being uh, during this time, uh, we've had the opportunity and been invited to take those masks off and to become a much more liberated uh, self. And yeah, I'm to be the sun and to think of like that symbolism and how much light, you know, I was bringing to the world um, during this time and how much light we can bring to the world when that comes off, the mask comes off, is just, uh, is really important during this time. It is, I know, and that's the thing. I mean, here you are, the sun, and you are, again, ready to shine your true self. You talked about, as you just said, they're bringing the light to this dark moment that we are experiencing globally. You know, we're, we're in this truly together, but your journey, so much of the backstory was that you did feel alone um, oh, in this big record, you know, industry that you had in some ways dominated, but was tearing at your very fabric of who you are as a person, as you pointed out, as a human. Yeah, I mean, I think as, for most celebrities, we've kind of put celebrities on a pedestal and, and we've ripped humanity from them. Um, and, you know, granted, it's wonderful to be a celebrity and be, have, be famous and all of these things, but um, really, I never got into music because of that. I wanted to sing. I love performing. I love connecting with people. And the way for me to connect with my own emotion has always been through music. And so yeah. that was what it was about for me was giving and receiving love. And that was the way that I did that was through music. I definitely felt alone growing up in this, in this business. There was, there was any, there wasn't really anyone like me. There was no yeah, one. I could you know what? I'd say that I, I've interviewed Justin Bieber a lot over the years. And I used to say, you guys are on these islands. There's no blueprint to tell a four-year-old, you know, Leanne Rhymes, this is how this is going to work out. Or a 10-year-old Leanne Rhymes. There's no blueprint. It's this very small group of huge young celebrities, whether it's Michael Jackson, um, but it's a small club. And, and so when I look at your your life, for example, this intense schedule that you worked as a child, um, you were performing, I think they said by the numbers, um, you know, 500 shows in three and a half years. Your dad managed your career for a while. And at some point at 16, you wanted to take back or take control. It wasn't even taking it back because you never had the control. You wanted to take it back. And I, I remember seeing an interview, Leanne, where you talked about being in a room and looked around and realizing that everyone, all of the adults, you were their payroll. You were paying them. Yeah, um, I still... That still doesn't quite register for me, to be honest. Um, it is very strange. And by the way, you say that blueprint that is presented for young stars, it's, you know, it's really one of destruction. And uh, there's, I think that's probably been my greatest accomplishment is actually, you know, when I was 30 saying, I need help and finding my way back to myself and into wholeness because I want to be a different blueprint, you know, and and I want to start something new. I'll cry talking about I it. I know but... you're going to make me cry because I actually just got chills, honestly, <laughs> because you know that is that's what you're doing now. Okay, Leanne, now we're going to both start crying. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, well, these, but yeah. these are tears of liberation because you <laughs> are unpacking this painful part. You know, you're 16. You you fight um, through so much by keeping, you know, your voice and your talent in the forefront. And now yeah. you find yourself, since we're here now, 30, which I find amazing. You were 30. And you ch at a time you should be celebrating that new part of your life, you checked into a facility. Mm -hmm. I did. And it was the best gift I could have given myself. Um, you know, I've constantly had people around me my whole life, whether it be parents or my ex-husband or a manager, agent, whatever it was, um, the whole, all the world's eyes were on me constantly and talk about codependency. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'd never been alone really until 
being in, you know, treatment uh, for anxiety and depression. And I was, I mean, I was constantly just like, it felt like someone plugged me into a wall socket and like left me on, like constantly on. And I needed to figure out how to unravel from that mm -hmm. and really kind of gather those pieces and bring those back into wholeness. And all these pieces that I had rejected about myself, learn how to love them wow. um, and rec bring them to the table and re realize that they're all, the totality of me is lovable. It's not just the Leanne Rhymes that's projected into the world that everyone wanted to be this perfect, you know, little girl. It was the totality of me um, could come to the table and and have a voice. And you know, you, we, my voice is. I've been so proficient with one piece of my voice, um, but there was these all of these other pieces of me that needed a voice. Unmasking in this interview here. Um, Leanne, so it was eight years ago, 30th birthday, you decide that it's also overwhelming. Take me to that, because I'm always curious, like, what was that moment where you decide, I need to get in a car and I need to check myself in, that being in the home or being wherever you were was not going to be enough? Um, yeah, it wasn't really, it wasn't as, as dramatic as that, I think. Um, I, I feel like my my husband drove me, actually, and uh, the, the dramatic part of the whole thing was that I just, I was scared. I mean, I was scared to be alone. I knew I needed help, and I knew it was the best thing for me, but um, the fear of actually being alone and, you know, and actually spending time on myself. Was it that you were turning 30 to set off the the... the the, the decision, I mean, because uh, you yeah. could have just laid in bed and, you know, put your head on the cover and, uh, you ask Eddie, your husband, to take yeah. you. No, I was in, I was in a lot of, um, I was in a lot of physical pain too at the time. I was going through a lot of, uh, a lot of dental surgeries and I was in physical and mental just anguish and I knew I kind of had one of two ways for my life to go at that moment. And I think I've, the one thing that's always kept me driven and going in this world is a bit of defiance. Um, and that defiance, I think, really is what was still left and that I knew I, there was still a, a fire in me to, to, to help myself. And I think I also um, had to know that as at the moment, at that time, I didn't realize I was whole. I didn't know, you know, we talk about the fracturing. I was so fractured that I didn't realize that I, that I was worthy of of this kind of help and of a happy life, really. Um, not until I got help was I able to see like, oh, all of me is worthy of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that self-worth piece plays a huge piece. It's a, it, it's a key role in in taking ourselves back, you know, and, and becoming whole. You know, when you said it could have gone one or two ways, where did you see it going if you didn't get that help? I mean, I... Um, I think it would, it was already going down a dark path and I think it could have gone even darker. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. um, there's no end to that darkness unless there's a, a true end to it. Uh, and I just didn't, I didn't, I had too much life left to live, you know? Um, but I definitely think that that darkness can, can pull you down even further once you're in it. And so, um, like I said, that defiance piece, I think was just like, no, I'm, I want to, I want to live. I know I'm supposed to be living for something. You talked to me about finding your independence and in, 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 in this liberation. How did you balance that, though, with being married? Because you are together, you know, a, a family, but you're also struggling to keep Leanne at the same time. Yeah, um, well, I think, actually, he was part of my liberation, um, definitely. You know, he has given me the space and the love to, to really be able to step into my space full self and has shown all of me love. I think it's funny what we do unconsciously to our partners and, you know, with all of the pain that he had to experience watching me go through it, uh, wow. so much pain. It's like I was testing him, like, will you love this part of me? Will you oh. love this part of me? And, um, you know, to, to see him fully be able to to step in as a partner and uh, and be there for me throughout all of this, like, it's a beautiful thing. And now he's also with me in my joy. and. You know, we've we've gotten to experience everything together. So yeah, um, he was definitely. I think the the safety and security that I felt and I feel with him um, definitely allowed me to step into step into my pain where I felt like I I was tethered to something that was um, was was really powerful and wow. and safe. 